Hello, welcome to RSD Academy. I'm Bob Duhamel, and in this video we're going to look at Class B push-pull power amplifiers. In the previous video we discussed how we could make a Class A power amplifier. All we have to do is select these resistors such that as the voltage goes up and down on the input, that when the voltage is at its very lowest point, whatever voltage that is, that this voltage does not go low enough that this transistor starts to turn off. So that no matter where it is in the cycle, at the top or the bottom, we continually have this transistor turned on to some degree. So as this voltage goes up, more current flows through here. As the voltage goes down, less current flows. That causes the magnetic field across the transformer to expand and collapse, transferring energy across and making the speaker to go back and forth. And it's able to operate through the full 360 degrees of the input cycle, so it's smoothly moving back and forth and amplifying the whole signal. But the big disadvantage of this is, even when there's no input, zero volts, this current is going to be at its halfway point. It's going to be halfway between its highest current and its lowest current, so it's going to be the average current flowing through this transistor all the time. So that if this is a 100 watt amplifier, this transistor is constantly getting rid of 100 watts. And so we have to have big heat sinks on it, and it's very inefficient, where even if we have it turned down, it's using 100 watts. Can we design an amplifier so that if there's no input, there's no current, so there's no power dissipation? And as we turn up the volume, it only produces enough power to actually operate on the input signal and doesn't produce a high power all the time. And that would be a Class B push-pull amplifier. Let's take a quick look at a Class B amplifier, and all that would be is that we change the bias of these transistors so that when there's no input, this transistor is just about to turn on. So we'll say it's about 0.7 volts at the base of this, roughly. So we simply choose these transistors to put this at 0.7 volts or whatever voltage it might be slightly lower. This transistor is just starting to turn on so that as this voltage goes up, we get an increase in current through here that goes across the transformer, causes a current through the speaker, and makes the speaker move. However, when it gets back down to zero, the speaker will come back, but when this goes lower, it will pull this voltage below 0.7 volts, the transistor will be turned off, and we get no current through the transformer, and nothing's going to happen. So the speaker is going to go out and back, out and back, out and back. So as we send an input signal that looks like this, the output signal is going to be, the voltage here is going to be something like that, and that, and that just down and up, down and up, down and up, and the speaker is going to go out and back, out and back, out and back. We won't get the full flow as this voltage goes up and down. We don't get the speaker going in and out following it smoothly. It only follows the top half of the curve. So that would be a simple way to turn this into a Class B amplifier. There's easier ways to make Class B. All these other transistors are part of the Class A small signal amplifier that we described before. So here's a simplified, more practical Class B amplifier. Our input signal comes in through this capacitor, and we have this resistor chosen so that the current flowing through the base gets us just barely turning this transistor on approximately 0.7 volts at the base. And so that when our signal comes in, which is centered on zero volts, as that voltage goes up, it causes this current to increase, which causes that current to increase, which makes the speaker move one direction. Which direction it moves depends on how it's wired, and it's not really important. We'll just say it's moving that way. So as this signal goes up and down, the speaker goes out and back. But when this goes negative, this voltage drops below the turn-on voltage, approximately 0.7 volts. Current cannot flow backwards from the emitter to the base of the transistor. Therefore, we get no current, and the speaker just does nothing for the bottom half. So each time we go positive, the speaker goes out and back, but for the negative side, nothing happens. So we only get half of the signal amplified. That is, by definition, a Class B amplifier. And we would get severe distortion. So we need a better solution. What if we build two Class B amplifiers in such a way that one amplifier amplifies the positive half, and the other amplifier amplifies the bottom half. 
let's draw that. So here we have a simple class B push-pull amplifier. So we have over here a class A small signal amplifier transformer coupled over. Remember we can put a transformer in the collector instead of a resistor and as this current increases we get a magnetic field that gets bigger and as the current decreases the magnetic field collapses and so as that magnetic field passes through this secondary of the transformer we get a current that goes through this transistor and turns it on. We get a small current here and we get a big current coming from our power supply through this top half of the transformer through the transistor to ground. And so when the signal comes in positive half, this transistor turns on and takes current through this half of this transformer. I forgot one minor detail over here, which is the speaker, which is once again transformer coupled over to here. So as this current is flowing through here, we get a magnetic field that builds and then collapses. That comes across this coil and causes current to get bigger and then smaller. So the speaker cone goes out and back. Now when this goes to the negative side, the magnetic field collapses, causes current to flow in this direction, turns on this transistor, and pulls current this way. So when the current was going that way, the magnetic field got bigger, and then it got smaller. Then when this one goes, the magnetic field polarity reverses and gets bigger and smaller. So we get a reversal of polarity, and now the current goes the opposite direction and causes the speaker to go the opposite direction. So now, when this goes high, speaker goes out and back. When this goes low, the speaker goes in and back out again. So it's going out and back, in and out, out and in, in and out. And we almost get a smooth transition so that it follows the signal. There's only one element missing to make this a complete uh, push-pull amplifier. Very simple, as you can see, just two transistors a coupling transformer for the input, a coupling transformer for the output. Notice that this is tapped so we get our 10 volts in the middle. So the, when the top half is conducting we get current through this half of the transformer. When the bottom half is conducting we get current through that half of the transformer. And once again we get a magnetic field that builds and collapses, reverses polarity, builds and collapses, and operates the speaker. But there's one slight problem. This transistor does not start conducting until this gets up above about, well, this voltage here gets above about 0.7 volts. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a slight delay between the time that this starts going up in voltage and the speaker starts to react because it takes a little bit of delay that this has to get up to 0.7 volts before we actually start getting current. So the speaker is going to go out and in, back and forth, out and back, back and forth. So if we look at the output, it's going to look something like this. And this is called crossover distortion. As it crosses over from one half of the amplifier to the other, we get this little bit of a shelf here. So all we need to do is get these transistors so that they're just about ready to turn on when the signal goes up. And all we have to do to do that is tap the first transformer and put a resistor there. And we choose this resistor so that the current flowing through the resistor into the bases of these transistors is just enough to almost have them turning on. So that when we have the, this signal come in, as soon as the magnetic field starts to cross and we get the current to flow, this transistor immediately turns on and the speaker immediately starts to move. And then when it comes back, instead of it hesitating, the other transistor turns on and pulls it back the other way. So we end up not having the crossover distortion. So that's a very simple amplifier, and if you tear open some radios and stuff, a lot of times you'll see somewhere in the circuit is a couple of transformers and a couple of transistors, and you can point at that and say, ha, there is my transformer coupled push-pull amplifier right there. Nothing to it. Input transformer, output transformer, two transistors, one biased resistor, and that's about it. Now the disadvantage of this particular circuit is that you have to have these two fairly heavy transformers to make it work. So there is a way to make a push-pull amplifier without transformers. We can make a transformerless push-pull amplifier. Let's take a look at that. And here it is. So we start with a standard Class A small signal amplifier that's capacitor coupled over. One disadvantage of this particular design is you need dual power supplies. Notice this is plus 10 volts, 
minus 10 volts and ground here. That means that essentially we have two batteries. So we have two 10 volt batteries plus 10 here, minus 10 here and ground in the middle, but we're not showing those. But once again, disadvantage number one is you need dual power supplies. Disadvantage number two is you have to have two matched but opposite polarity transistors. If you remember in the transformer coupled one, we had two NPN transistors. It could be made with two PNP transistors with very little modification. Here we have to have two transistors, an NPN and a PNP that are matched in characteristics. Well, that's not too difficult because manufacturers make matched pair NPN and PNP transistors just for this purpose. So the way this works is, as our signal comes in, as this goes above zero volts, it pushes the voltage up here so that this transistor starts to conduct. First, we choose these two resistors to make this right at zero volts. So when the input goes up, it causes the voltage to go up here, causes that transistor to conduct. More current goes through that way, through the speaker, making the speaker go one direction. So as that goes up, the speaker goes out and back in. Then when it goes below zero volts, it causes this voltage to go below 0 0.7 volts. So it's a PNP transistor. So we have minus 0.7 volts. When it gets up above that, this starts to conduct. And so we have some current flowing this way, which pulls more current that way, which causes the speaker to go the opposite direction. So in the positive half, the speaker goes out and back in. During the negative half, the speaker goes in and back out. Once again, we have the problem of crossover distortion though. So when this is at zero volts, neither transistor is conducting. This has to get up to about 0.7 volts before it starts to conduct. Then this has to go down to about minus 0.7 volts before this transistor starts to conduct. So we get that same crossover distortion once again. How do we eliminate that? There are multiple ways, but the most common way, and the one I'm going to show you, is simply putting a couple of diodes over here. Let me get rid of some of this clutter. Put two diodes in series right there. Now, when we have the current flowing through here, this voltage here will be plus 1.4 volts above this voltage here, whatever it is. So we design it so we get about zero volts right there. So we get actually about plus 0.7 here and about minus 0.7 there. So that when there's no signal coming in, both transistors are right on the edge of turning on. And so when this voltage starts to go up, this transistor immediately turns on, the speaker immediately starts to move. When it hits zero volts, as soon as it goes below, this transistor immediately turns on, causing the speaker to go the opposite direction, and we eliminate that crossover distortion. So once again, a very simple design. We have two transistors. They just have to be opposite polarity, but matched in characteristics. We have two bias transistors here and the two diodes to make sure that the two bases are 1.4 volts apart. We set it up so that this is going to be about plus 0.7, and that'll be about minus 0.7 when there's no signal coming in. Then when the signal comes in, it pushes this one into conduction, causes the speaker to go one way. When the input goes negative, it causes this one to start to conduct, causes the speaker to go the opposite direction, and now we have smooth operation of the speaker. Now, as I mentioned before, I saw a very high-end, a very expensive Class A power amplifier once, and the big disadvantage of that was is that it was a 100 watt amplifier and it was always dissipating 100 watts. Well, some people think that you can't ever get rid of the crossover distortion, but you can reduce it to the point where it's impossible to hear it. And the big advantage, of course, is when there's no signal coming in, both transistors are turned off, there's no current flowing, no power being dissipated. As we turn up the volume, the power being dissipated increases proportional to the volume, so we don't produce more power than we need to to operate this amplifier. So once again, this is your transformerless push-pull amplifier. If you think this video was useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It's very helpful. And a big thank you to our patrons at Patreon. You're really helping make this possible. And to everyone, thanks for watching.